nine weeks until GCSEs or nine weeks until A levels or whatever exams that you may have. We have roughly nine weeks. If you're watching this as soon as I have uploaded it, we have about 10 weeks. So that means that you have an entire week to get yourself organized. If you might remember from last year, I made a very, very similar video uh, on a nine week revision plan and it worked really well. And it was my most popular video as well. So I decided, you know what? I might as well make a new updated one because a lot of the things in that video was a bit outdated and also there was a lot of like buffering and things that happened in that video that I want to fix in this video and just overall the nine week revision plan for this year is going to be much more in depth and it should hopefully motivate you to get your work done and so you can get those grades that you deserve in whatever exams that you may have. If you don't want to watch this video, the revision plan is on Google Sheets, it is already down below in the description so you can just click it and you can just get on with it, you don't even need to watch this video. There are instructions on how to use it on the Google Sheets as well but hopefully this video can be more in depth and just show you why this worked for me back in my GCSEs. This is assuming that your first exam begins on the week of the 15th May I think it is so that means you have nine weeks but you can always adjust the dates if you need to and I've also got an A level one down below in the description and for the GCSE one I've got a few few themes as well so you can pick between a few so right now I am on the nine week revision plan sheet as you can see I am currently on the subject topic list tab so before I used to have this on the same like page as all the revision plan material so now I've got the week one week two week three all separate and I've got the subject topic list separate as well so we're gonna start with the subject topic list this is probably where you should spend most of your time at first and basically it's got all your subjects so for right now I've only put maths, English, biology, chemistry, physics and as you can see on the right here you can add any other subjects that you do as well but the point of this is to see what you're struggling on and to see what you need more practice on so let's go to maths for example and as you can see I've got two columns here I've got a list of topics um, you can always change that if you're doing a different spec so for maths I'm doing Edexcel you can go to the description below if you want to see what examples I do for all my subjects so this is for the GCSE one I've also got the A level one which I'll go over in some detail as well now for the GCSE one over here I've got all the list of topics and I've got this column here that says strength and um, basically once you open this Google Sheets you can make a copy of it make this your own and you can input in here how strong you think you are out of five so five is going to be that you know this so well that if you just went into your GCSEs right now and did this type of question you would have gotten 100% on it so prime factors that's fair enough that's pretty easy let's go for five uh, LCM and HCF I can't lie I've forgotten how to do that um, let's put two uh, recurring decimals that's pretty easy I'll put four bounds I, uh, they're not my favorite but they're quite simple so I'll put four standard form five but the point is I'm just gonna put random numbers here um, at the end you're gonna have like this list of numbers in terms of how strong you think each each part of that subject is okay so here we go on math over here I've got this nice little like array of colors here and if you want to just see your number ones which is like one out of five the ones that you just don't understand at all what you can do is come down here at the bottom you can click on this all button you can scroll down a bit you can filter out which ones you want to see so if I just want to see which ones are number one I can just click on that one I can click OK and now as you can see it only shows up as sequences as being my least favorite one that I can't do at all so this can help you in working out what topics you need to do as revision and once you get better at a topic you can just change the numbers and slowly see those increase over time and then I can reset it by just clicking select all and just like that you can have that for math you can have that for English whatever subject you want but I've put for math here obviously all of this is just really based on your own interpretation and the cool thing is the colors change by themselves the colors just automatically go away as well if you do want to change the colouring, you can come up to the conditional formatting over here and you can change the colour scale right here. So that is all just like, if you don't know how to do that stuff, um, you can always email me, I can always help you with that. But um, I do have like a different colour scheme for each of the different themes to kind of suit that like sort of aesthetic. Um, so you can always change that if you want to have your own type of thing. So that's there for like inspiration. But with biology actually, it's slightly different. I've got over here a different column too, which is reviewed because 
with biogeochemistry physics, the sciences, um, I usually find myself forgetting a lot of the information. So when it does come back to me actually learning the information, I can check this box when I think I've learned it. And by learning it, you can do it in different ways. So for me, that would be by flashcards. So once I made my flashcards for that topic, I can check that off. Ideally, you don't want to uncheck the boxes. You just want to check them once you think you've memorized it. And if you think you're forgetting things after that, you just do more practice on it. So this column over here is still the same. You can always change it. So if you don't want one to five, you can change it to one to 10 if you want to be more specific. So that's just literally all there is for the topic list section. You can always change this if you like, as I've said. And also for English language over here, I've kind of made it in terms of questions rather than in terms of papers, because I usually do the questions all separately. Sometimes I don't, but it's easier to see this way, which questions I'm struggling more with. So like paper one, question one, I can be easy five. And then paper one, question two, I can put like, three, not my favorite, paper one question three, two, paper one question four, four, it's not too bad, paper one question five, one. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm glad I didn't do English language anymore, but the point is you can just see from that what subjects you need to do more work on and what topics in those subjects you need to do work on as well. So that's the subject topic list section. Let's move on to the next part, which is the past paper tracker. So in the past paper tracker, this is going to be for whenever you're doing past paper practice, which should be as much as possible. So let's assume you get a maths paper one done over here. I've kind of already shown it, but the point is, let's do another one. Let's do a paper two calculator. Uh, let's say I got, I don't know, 81%, which is pretty good. Uh, and the thing automatically color codes it as well. So if I got 24%, for example, you can see that the color is significantly different to like 95%, for example. So I've done all of that behind the scenes. You don't need to really worry about that, but you can always change over here. You can see it's all just based on the value being between certain percentages. So you can always change that if you have different targets. Um, but yeah, so that's how I've done it over here. And if you delete them, they just go away. So let's assume you did a maths paper two and you ended up getting 81%, for example. You put it in here just like that it shows up as a percentage and then you can insert note right here and you can put information about that paper and what targets you have so I've done one already here for this paper one non calc and I've got the link over here as well if I ever want to go back to it but I've got as a note over here just everything about that paper so I'm assuming I got 59 out of 80 for this um, obviously I didn't do a maths paper one here I'm just showing it as an example and the targets as well just put them there so then whenever you're going back over them you can then work out what topics need more help I've got this example over here let me just copy and paste it this is something it should look like I don't know a few weeks into your revision plan and as you can see it gives you this nice kind of array of colors again but this time you can kind of work out what past papers you need to do more practice on so just by looking at this I need to do way more English language practice because I've only done one paper for both of them and they've both been pretty bad um, and for something like maths paper 2 um, I clearly do not need to do any more practice I am just slowly improving and I've got 100% over here so that's something I can put off for a bit but something like uh, Shakespeare and poetry I might need to do a bit more practice on and now we're going to move on to the actual nine week revision plan so I'm outside right now to give you guys a bit of a break and talk about our sponsor which is Leading Tuition. It's basically this tuition site where you can get tuition advice from Oxbridge students so you're getting tuition from experts in that field. There's no contract or anything. You can do as many lessons as you like or as little lessons as you like. It's completely up to you. I have a link in the description below as well so if you click the link in the description below and put my code N-O-U-M-A-N you get a £10 discount on your first lesson so you might as well test it out see if it's for you. Click the link in the description below if you want to check it out and yeah let's just get back into the video. In terms of of the actual nine week revision plan that's here this is the main weekly overview that's the main part of this so as you can see I've done the dates already you can always change them depending on whatever exam that you have and um, whenever it is but um, we're gonna start from week one and as you can see there's these different colored boxes here and this dark green box means a task that you need to do for that day so let's assume you need to do a maths pass paper that's just going to be something that you can put there and something that you need to do on that day, it's mandatory. You have to make sure you do it. And then the stuff down below over here 
are things that it's recommended for you to do but you don't need to do them so you don't feel bad about not doing them and the point of this is to make it as flexible as possible so you still try and get stuff done but you don't feel bad when you don't get things done especially in week one out of nine you don't need to do that much work the reason I've got this nine week revision plan it may seem excessive but it can slowly build up the knowledge over time now obviously you might struggle in knowing what to do for the week and that's where this weekly dump comes along and this basically before you start every week you're going to just dump out everything you want to do in that week mainly so let's assume that in this week the first week I want to get done with a DT pass paper for who knows what reason um, and maybe an RS pass paper one as well and maybe I want to finish off my math CGP workbook I'm just putting random things here I might be very close to finish if you're struggling on sequences you could also do sequences questions the more and more stuff you put the more and more boxes that just automatically appear for you which is kind of cool as well so if you want more things than the amount that's been given here you can just put them in and it will automatically color in the box for you and if you delete them the boxes disappear by themselves as well and then what you can do is you can then put these tasks in your boxes over here for when you want to get them done and yeah that's the planning part um, another important part over here is the dailies so there will probably be things that you want to do daily such as like flashcards now this is something you don't need to do this might be on an external to-do list app or something but it's just here if you like everything in one place and you can always tick them and then uncheck them for the next day so that's just there you might be wondering what this thing over here on the right is and it's basically all the subjects that you're doing and you're rating them in terms of how good of a grade you think you're gonna get so you're gonna have to change this to whatever subjects you do but here was my list of GCC subjects and let's assume um, out of all of these I'm gonna say that I'm probably most likely to get a 9 in maths and I can put that as number one and then I don't know geography then physics and I'm just putting random ones here but you just go one two three four five six seven all the way to whatever your last GCSE is so for me I do 11 so my 11th is going to be my last one and as you can see it brings up this gradient automatically of whichever subjects you think you're strongest at and which subjects you think you're weakest at and now looking at this you look at which ones are the most read so further maths english literature english language and you can then use that to go back to your weekly dump and add more things in and so if you ever don't know what to do you can always try and work on those bottom three subjects and try and push them upwards and what you're trying to do is over the course of the nine weeks is to constantly be pushing those bottom three subjects up to the point where those bottom three subjects start going near the top and the top subjects start sinking down and you can push those ones up and you just continually just push them all up until you're strong on all of them and you end up doing well on every single one of those subjects so that's your main aim with this over here and obviously you're gonna have to change this to your subjects and when you change it you're gonna have to change the conditional formatting and the way to do that is by going to the color scale and just changing your max number of items so if you do 12 GCSEs if you do 9 you can change it to the number on the maximum and you can change the gradient as well I've made it this like green to blue to red theme but you can change it to like green to yellow to red or whatever you like uh, this entire thing is just like this blue and green kind of theme but it just depends on whichever theme you choose as well so yeah that's the GCSE revision plan that is literally it everything else just comes down to your own organization and if you have any other questions leave them down below in the comments because it will probably help out a lot of other people as well that might have similar questions to you as well so all you need to do now is go to file make a copy and just use it and see if it works for you you've got an entire week if you're watching this on the day i uploaded it to decide if you think this is good for you and how you're going to organize everything now if you're doing a level the thing is mainly the same as well the revision plan as you can see over here i've got my subject topic list once again and this time i've got all the year one stuff over here because i'm in year 12 so my exam is basically an as but with a few more topics that we've done from year two and year one but i haven't added them here i'm going to add them into my own personal one so you can always uh, put this into your own and then add more topics or remove topics that you haven't done and basically the way it works is pretty much the same so because I'm in year 12 I'm not going to need to do this past papers tracker over here it just doesn't really make sense because most of the stuff I haven't done yet I haven't done most of the topics but for any year 13s that are watching this video this can be pretty useful for you and in terms of the week 1 to week 9 I personally am not going to be spending oh week 4 week 5 <laughs> they're just blank I need to change that but 
I'm personally not going to be spending all my nine weeks revising for my year 12 end of years. I'm probably going to start on week five. So I'm only going to revise for them like four weeks from beforehand properly. So I'm not going to be spending the entire nine weeks revising for them because there's just not that much content. Like if I go back to the topic list, it's really empty compared to GCC one. But each of these topics is huge. I know that. But like just generally, it's not going to require as much vision. So I'm probably going to start this about four weeks beforehand so you can always change the dates over here these dates are once again assuming that your first exam is on the week starting the 15th of May but obviously that's probably not the case so you can change that to whatever date your first exams are so for me I think that's the week after 15th May I think I can't remember I'm going to change this to suit me and obviously this one doesn't have that like ordering subjects thing because you're probably only going to be doing three or four subjects so you don't need to order them by a chart thing because you can just kind of know already which subject needs the most attention so I mean you can always copy and paste it from the GCSE one if you like but I just think it's a bit pointless for A-level and yeah that is it that is literally it for this nine week revision plan I mean it was quite a lot of stuff that I did go over if there's anything that you still need more help on my email is down below and obviously when you click on the Google Sheets it does have an entire how to use page where I've tried to make it as detailed as possible in how to use this entire Google Sheets and if you don't like Google Sheets you can import it into an Excel document or whatever you might find useful. This is like somewhere in between so it's got enough structure for you to get revising but not too much structure that you start becoming unorganized because of the over structured sense of the timetable. I really think that it could help you as long as you stick to it and you actually get the the work done that you set yourself to do and that's it so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you find this revision plan useful it's entirely free remember it's down below in the description i've got lots of different themes because i wanted to one up myself from a year ago so now i've got all these different colorings and fonts so yeah i hope you guys find one that suits you and make sure you share this video with as many people as you can especially people that might be struggling in their revision yeah i'll see you guys next week hopefully and best of luck with your gccs best of luck with your a levels best of luck with your end of years best of luck with any exam that you may have and i hope that you get the grades you deserve and i hope that you put in that hard work bye guys see you next week have a nice day